Venza Gold Fuse. That's a name you might not know very well, but you probably know the mechanics. It's the three pronged boss in the kind of auction area of Tazavesh streets. And I think before they retooled a lot of this dungeon, people looked at this boss as a really difficult one. They might still. And I think the reason that it's looked at as such a difficult boss is because the overlap from the second part of the boss to the third part of the boss is incredibly difficult. And people kind of try to figure out where they have to deal their damage. And they don't really have everything planned out very well. And things end up going really poorly when both bosses last really long. So I am going to show you a tip to dramatically improve your ability to kill this boss because it's weird. Blizzard added a pretty big damage buff to this encounter, but without proper positioning, you'll really never make good use out of it. Like I think if you just tank them in the dead center of the room, it's extremely unlikely that you'll actually gain any benefit from these orbs. But I do want to give credit where credit's due. I had first found out about this on Wowhead a few weeks back. Whenever something like this gets posted on Wowhead, people automatically assume that it's a bug and it's going to get fixed by Blizzard. Now that was a few weeks ago now now, probably at least three weeks ago, and it has not been changed. But just in case it ever does get changed, you'll know who to thank. The thing is, they recommended tanking him in a spot that I did not like at all. So I found a better spot, and I'm going to show you that here today. So let's take a look at this, and you'll see just how perhaps broken this actually is, but how overpowered it can be. So I got them all stacked up in the corner there so you can dip in there and get 10 stacks and then you're, you're out basically. So if you didn't fully understand what you're looking at, for some reason, if the orbs come out right in that corner there, they just get stuck. The way it's supposed to work is they're supposed to radiate out from him in a few different directions and those direction orientations kind of spin as they're coming out. Well, the ones that are right against that back wall there, typically if they weren't as close to that wall as they are right now, they will just bounce off the wall. So at least as of right now, if you ever see all five of them coming out from different directions and bouncing off the wall and not getting stuck, then he's not close enough. And that's really really an important part of what I showed here because actually moving him as the tank is the only way this trick can be executed. The goal though is to get it stuck in two directions so a lot of them pile up but deciding when to move is the question right now for me. I've been dabbling with moving him immediately as you see here but I think it makes this part of the fight a little bit harder so I'll wait to see how this proliferates on like a higher tyrannical key but as you see here I'm kind of like jamming myself into the wall here to get him to move because he needs to be as close to this wall as humanly possible. If you were able to knock back this boss the ideal circumstance would be to tank him here and then knock him back but you see a lot of them aren't really getting stuck only a few got stuck there so i'm thinking like okay i really need to reposition him i need to get him stuck in this corner as deep as possible and then we'll have a lot stacking up the reason this is trickier than it sounds though is because this right here exposed anima core when the boss dies he exposes his anima core upon death, creating a pool of corrosive anima, inflicting damage every second. So you need that pool to be in a place where people aren't accidentally standing when you're fighting the boss. And that's where things start to become a little bit more messy for the tanking position, because we want that guy in the corner deep enough that that pool and the orbs are getting stuck. But you want the boss that you're fighting to be close enough to him so you can easily do this without losing any time. The goal here is to just get massive uptime on this boss. I think that's the big issue with this encounter is that basically the last two bosses encourage really poor uptime and tanking them in this way and doing all of this together, it's going to really, really increase your uptime. And so this is the part that makes me want to tank in this corner as opposed to where they showed in Wowhead. In Wowhead, they showed like this little door that's basically where you enter the room. And I don't really think it works any better. I think it theoretically could because it's actually three sides enclosed instead of just two sides enclosed but the problem is you have to drag the boss all the way to the other side and again kind of smash your back into the wall to get him to fit in there perfectly here comes the third boss and he's chasing probably a healer or somebody not me right so you have to be in range to actually keep this guy here 
and get that boss come before it comes and starts smacking a melee or a healer. So the question is, how best do you do that? And if you're all the way at the other side of the room, there is no way to do that. You have to let her come into the room and just risk somebody getting meleeed while you're waiting for the robot to die. Because the robot is still going to be up when this boss spawns. Now on like an easy fortified week or a low key in general, a lot of times the RP for Venza herself will have not concluded before this robot dies. But on higher keys where the health pools are much larger, she starts to RP at something like 30% on his health pool. And if you don't kill that 30% on the health pool before her RP finishes, she's also there on the counter. And that's what I was talking about because it gets really difficult when both bosses are up. So if you're trying to do this strategy, this boss needs to stay in that corner, meaning she needs to be brought to the corner. And since you're stuck in the corner, the DPS and healers are going to have to be aware of that very hug unfriendly. So this should work a lot better hugging wise. So once you have the entire fight positioned properly, hanging her just far enough away from that puddle on the ground that nobody's in e ever in any danger of standing in that, but close enough that people can quickly dip in and dip out, then it's time to reap the fruits of your labor. So if you're not aware how the basic mechanic works, it's going to be a big purple kind of bluish circle around the character, and that's going to swap every time to the closest person after it expires. So the way this should be working is you should be trying to bounce this around to your melee DPS as much as possible. The good thing is here that healer and the DPS who aren't melee are just going to be able to turret the entire time. They should never have to move as long as they're positioned directly behind the boss. Then all the anima orbs will either miss them wide or will get soaked up by the person who's just sitting here attacking the boss. But as you see, a great still here is right here. You see, like, I mean, there's got to be at least like seven of those just kind of stuck there. And that's because they're coming out and they're not able to like create enough distance for them to actually bounce off that wall. They kind of just get stuck in the wall and the player can just swoop in every once in a while basically what you want to do is you want to probably go in as soon as you get the debuff and then again right at the end and that should maximize your stacks and it'll be very little time loss because you're basically only moving maybe like five yards total away from the boss as melee dps instead of like in the beginning of the season i saw people like running around in circles trying to protect the range and healers things get a little bit messier though with the whirling annihilation the thing is you got to dodge this anyway so it's not really anything special but people are going to only have like kind of like a 45 degree angle to actually dodge it now as long as the range and the healers are far away it's just going to be on melee and really the tank doesn't even need to dodge it to be honest but let's watch the whole thing here i start with two stacks just because there's two running into the boss and then you'll see how many stacks i get just from these kind of piling up and it's not even really that many there so just immediately getting 11 stacks of that buff and then we'll sit here and you know just kind of collect any that come by the boss making sure that we're staying in melee dps range the whole time and we'll go back in for another couple easy stacks and we ultimately get up to 20 without any concern. And as you can see, these actually refresh. So ideally we'll have the full 17 or 18 seconds of them as my debuff expires. And we'll just do a ton of extra DPS for almost no nothing lost. You know, I think it's easy to say that Blizzard probably expected this to be a trade-off, right? Like they wanted you to scramble and potentially be dodging this mechanic. But when you can deal with it this way, you're really not losing anything. You're able to get a ton of stacks of it and you're able to maintain full uptime on the boss. So the only tricky part is the overlap in between the two and just making sure people are aware of when they should go in obviously you should not go in there and then just bathe in the puddle that's just going to get you killed get in get the stacks and get out so this is all positioning the tank is the only one who could really influence this so if you have any questions about this let me know again it might at some point look like it gets fixed but just make sure the robot is flat against that wall it's harder than it looks but if you can jam them up against that wall you'll get multiple directions of those balls just getting stuck and it makes it a breeze so thank you for watching we will see you in the next one